So the Mi 11X with Nusantara OS 4.0, which is based on Android 12. Sounds like a great combination, right? Now Android 12 ROMs are heading in the right direction with a lot of customization and Monet UI. Well, the developers are doing a very good job at customizing it and making it look different in different sorts of menus and different parts of the operating system and stuff like that. Now in today's video, we're going to talk about the initial review of Nusantara 4.0, which is based on Android 12, as I said earlier, for the Mi 11X, also known as the Redmi K40 and the Poco f3 but hey before we get into all those details please subscribe and hit that notification bell icon because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this every single day if you like chatting with like-minded people who have similar devices well join us on telegram because we have more than 1000 to 1200 people over there chatting and having fun and exchanging knowledge every single day we're present on instagram twitter and facebook so you can follow us there and last but not the least if you think the hard work is worth the effort well please click on the join button and support the channel for some exclusive content now without further ado hello awesome people welcome to phone ops my name is Kalash. Let's get going. All right, so let's see what we have here. We have the Mi 11X, which says Nusantara 4.0 Surabaya. They have different names every time. Very, very intriguing. Official Android 12 updated on the 16th of November 2021. Now, if we talk about the change log over here, is it going to be long? Uh, well, Lavender, sweet, Elliot. That is it. So, oh, okay. Enforcing build. Yeah, that's a long change log. I would not want to bore you guys by reading that. You can, of course, go ahead and pause the video and have a look. But there are some notable changes over here. For example, this is the enforcing build. Wake with WFD. With display, bring back file manager. Add in motor Dolby. Dolby Audio on both speakers. That is good. So there are quite a lot of significant changes and that is the reason this video becomes even more significant. I flashed it yesterday evening and uh, you know since then I installed games on it. I tried all the other options and features and the customization options and uh, yeah it's it's a really really interesting update so let's go ahead and see what all we have here now the first thing this wallpaper of course i googled and i've said it it doesn't come with the rom so uh, the first thing that you will notice when you boot into this rom is you get nothing like bare minimum it's absolute bare bones and it doesn't come with gapps this is a vanilla build so you can you know go ahead and flash the flame gapps android 12 version let me know in the comment section if i should make an install video I can definitely go ahead and do that. But as you can see, I've installed the applications that I need for testing this ROM, like games and benchmark applications. And if you take out those of the equation, you barely have 12 to 15 apps. I don't even think you have that many. So that's excellent. The ROM feels super smooth, super fluid. I have said this in the Poco X3 Pro video as well, that the Android 12 based custom ROMs for the Poco X3 Pro and the Mi 11X with 120 Hertz mode are doing a brilliant job. They're working really, really well and I'm mighty impressed. Right, so the moment you swipe to the left, you will see that you have this beautiful Google feed. And uh, yeah, the smoothness on this is, I mean, I understand for obvious reasons, this is a higher end device compared to the Poco X3 Pro and the K20 Pro, but Google feed on custom ROMs on the Mi 11X works smoothest. It works really, really well. So no complaints there. It comes with very few and very basic applications like dialer, messaging, contacts and stuff. And I think those are from uh, AOSP. They are not Google applications. So that is the reason you only see the Chrome, uh, you know, the Chrome app icon being changed to the themed icon stuff. So if you actually swipe from the top to bottom, you will have very, very basic quick tiles. You have Dolby Audio, you have refresh rate, you have your privacy tiles. And if you go further, you have extra dim, reboot and night light, dark theme, nothing else. So very, very basic quick tiles, nothing advanced over here. You do have the power menu over here and you do have the option to quickly go to settings. And if you press and hold, you will go to home settings, which gives you access to, I think it is the quick step launcher, if I'm not wrong, because looking at that icon, that house icon that I saw, I thought that, you know, it is the quick step launcher, but the launcher is very basic. You don't really have a lot of customization. And moving on, if you go to widgets, you have a usual Android 12 affair wherein everything is present. It works fine. It doesn't come with the Android 12 or Android S clock widget. So maybe you can go ahead and install it later, right? Now you have wallpaper in style in which Monet is working absolutely fine. The moment you change the wallpaper, everything works. So in my photos, you can go ahead and select whatever wallpaper you want to and the Monet UI would adapt to that. As you can see over here, 
you know, but I like that one better, Deadpool, right? So let's go to my photos, let's set this one and the wallpaper theme will change once again, right? So Monet UI is doing a brilliant job, no problems there whatsoever. There might be some small bugs, like minor bugs, which are not a deal breaker here and there. So let's, let's now move to settings over here. Now under settings, you do have system and about phone. And in about phone, if you go to the Android version, you do see that it says Android 12 Nasantara Alpha. So this is the alpha build. Remember that if there are bugs, ignore them. Now you have this Easter egg over here. If you go to 12 p.m., you do get this wonderful look. Now, Nusantara maintainer is Thunder Kex. So thank you very much. Good job there. Version is 4.0. The kernel is Optimus Drunk Alieth kernel and it comes with the November security patch and SE Linux status is enforcing. So all good there. Now, you will see that the customization menu on this particular ROM or the settings menu itself looks a little different. They have you know, set network and internet over here, battery over here, and then you have this Nusantara wings section in which you have different colored icons for different level of customization. So, you know, as I have been saying, Android 12 ROMs are getting their share of customization. So over here you have a system, you have lock screen, you have status bar, and then you have hardware, right? So let's go to themes over here. And uh, this is the Monet customizer. So I'm not used it, have, don't have much experience. I'll explore it later. Notifications is blank under miscellaneous. You just have swipe to screenshot, which works absolutely fine along with extended screenshot. And then you have lock screen items, you have fingerprint preferences, both of them are blank. You do have your battery percentage uh, customization. You have your carrier label, which is blank. Then you go to clock options, once again, blank. Icon manager, very basic. Quick settings, traffic indicators can be enabled and it's working absolutely fine. And then under hardware, you have buttons, which is blank, navigation, which is working and power menu, which is blank. So the Nusantara team is making changes. This is the alpha version. They are adding things and it works fine, but most of the features are not present and they don't, uh, you know, they are not present. So simply they won't work. Wi-Fi calling basic functionality, I don't have a problem. You can install Gcam, this is Android 12 and Gcam should be working absolutely fine. I don't know about ANX camera though, right? Now, if you actually move on to say the battery section over here, you do have thermal profiles. Although you don't have the 180 Hz touch sampling rate, but you do have thermal profiles and if you set them to benchmark and stuff, they work absolutely fine. So nothing to worry there. Now let's quickly talk about the charging and discharging speeds over here. So as far as charging is concerned, in 51 minutes, it charged to 64%. So say about one hour, five minutes, one hour, 10 minutes, it's charged completely. That's a very good charging speed. Now, as far as discharging is concerned, let's have a look at the screenshot because I did charge the phone completely before actually going into this particular review. So let's see over here, 36% battery, right? And as you can see, Full battery estimates is five. So these are generic full battery estimates, but you know, it's it's doing a great job. No problem with the battery life. It should work just fine for an entire day, especially uh, the standby time is pretty decent. I've not had any issues there. And even in the UI, the smoothness in the UI is just beautiful. Now let's quickly go ahead and have a look at the benchmark numbers. But before that, important things like device being certified in the Play Store, safety networking, fine, wide when L1 working fine, all those things are taken care of. Now let's go to gallery here and let's see. CPU throttle test, 95% throttling. That is really excellent. And the average score was 235, 315 GIPS. Now, in my knowledge on Android 12, this is the highest CPU throttle score that I've seen. Now let's go to Geekbench over here real quick. All right, now, as far as the Geekbench score is concerned, 964 single core, 2913 multi-core. Not bad for alpha build. It's not really, really high, but yeah, it's a pretty decent score. And if we talk about Android 2, this is where the magic happens because 695,360. This is a rock solid score. It dropped the battery by 4% and uh, increased the temperature by 7.3 degrees. So as you can see over here, the details are present and these are the individual scores. So if you ask me, all in all, Nusantara project doesn't have a lot of customization. It is like a pure ASP Android 12 ROM till now with some customization. Although you can use it as a daily driver, you know, it performs really, really well. It's smooth. It has battery backup and things like those. So if you want to install this ROM, definitely go ahead and give it a try. The team is heading in the right direction. Let me know in the comment section, what do you think about this video? Until the next one, this is Kailash, signing off with Phonox. 
keep smiling, take care, goodbye.